What's happening, everybody? So, my thoughts on the 5th Gen Camaro Z28. This is the car that ripped my still beating heart out of my chest, showed it to me, and then threw it out in the middle of the yard. So to explain to you why I've got jilted lover syndrome over this car, I've got to take you for a trip in the way back machine. So let's go back to 2013. There were a couple of cars that were being rumored, or at least were known to be on the horizon. And one of those was the 5th Gen Camaro Z28, and it was going to have the LS7 427. Now, at that time, I had my Lightning, and I had kind of gotten into tuning again, and the Lightning was kind of the gateway back into that. But at the time, I got to thinking, you know what? There's some really cool cars that are out there. I just don't want to spend that kind of money. You had the ZL1, which was an amazing car. It cost $58,000, though. You had this new Challenger at the time, the SRT8. Well, that was checking in somewhere around $45,000, $46,000, but really good-looking car, and you could kind of compare it to the ZL1 in a way, but Challenger was a little bit heavier, and it, yeah, it had a little bit less horsepower, but it had a lot of street presence to it. Good-looking car. But that Z28 with that 427, you know, the 427 harkens back to some serious nameplates like Yenko and, well, the Copo Camaro. So to me, that 427 LS7, plus the fact it was going to be in a Camaro, that to me was going to be the last muscle car that I could ever envision buying. I mean, what's not to love? It's practically a big block, modern version at least, in a car that weighs 35, 3,600 pounds. And it's a car that I could have kept and enjoyed just for what it is. No, it's not supercharged, but it is a 427. All aluminum V8 at that. Think of the possibilities without... Going too far, I could take the thing from 500 horsepower to about 600 horsepower. What would not be to love? Plus, I could have fun with this car in all types of venues. Closed course, autocross, drag racing, all of those options would be available to me. So you can imagine the heartbreak, the disappointment that I felt when I found out that that car was going to cost... $72,000. Let me put that in perspective for you. It wasn't that long before the Z28 was released that the C6Z06, the car that the engine was pulled from for that Z28, the C6Z06 was $72,000. So you can kind of do the math here. You know, a lighter car better performance, better handling, presumably, it's a Corvette, is costing the same, or the Z28 is going to cost the same as that car? A Camaro? Like, look, there ain't a dress cute enough that you can put on a Camaro to make it a Corvette. So I'm looking at the Camaro Z28, but now it's just Camaro to me. And all of my grandiose ideas of what I could do with this thing and what it was going to mean to me and, and all the fun that I was going to be able to have with this car all got thrown out the window. And you can talk about the suspension bits and the handling and all this other stuff all you want. But let me remind you that it was $14,000 more than the Z. L1 was. ZL1, I believe, had 550 some odd horsepower. But it was supercharged. And it was a lot less money. Now, potential aside, the Z28, as a car from the factory, was amazing. And yes, I get it. It handled really well. But I wasn't buying the car for handling. And when I started doing the math in my head, I guess my expectations were too high. You figure the ZL1 at about 550 horsepower was about $55,000. The SRT8, 
470 horsepower is about $47,000. So again, you can see this pattern of 100 bucks per horsepower. If the Z28 would have come in at $50,000, regardless of the neato mosquito suspension bits, all that could have just not existed as far as I was concerned. I was buying the car and the engine. The rest of the bits were irrelevant to me. But I would have been willing to spend that $50,000 to get that 500 horsepower Z28. But, again, $72,000. And I found it to be a little bit of a slap in the face to the Corvette guys too, those that had invested in a Z06, now seeing a Camaro coming in with the same engine. Oh, but you're going to have to spend $72,000 for the Camaro? Not a lot of Corvette guys made the trip back over to Camaro because they see it as a downgrade, <laughs> not an upgrade, because it's a Camaro. So anyway, it broke my heart. And it broke my heart to the point that from a new car perspective, I never considered GM ever again. I got to thinking about this a little bit, and I've driven the Z28. It's a nice running car. It's a fun car to drive. But for the money, give me the Z06. Z06 is faster, handles better. Oh, and it's a Corvette, not a Camaro. So a car that was less than the Corvette, in all performance metrics that I can think of, not to mention court of public opinion, I would have to say that not only was I left disappointed with the car, but my expectations weren't met when I drove it either. I mean, to be fair, yeah, it's quick, it's fast, but I mean, it's not run away from that scat pack that was going to cost $45,000. Sure, it's faster, but you expect a lot out of a car that's making uh, about 30 odd more horsepower, has 30-ish more cubic inches, and weighs about, I don't know, 500 pounds less than that Challenger that I was just bringing up. So marginally faster than a Challenger, but it costs 30 grand almost more than the Challenger. <laughs> I've run out of thoughts on it. For me, that car is one of the greatest disappointments as a car guy that I've ever experienced. It really did paint GM in an odd light for me. And of course, since then, I did buy my Z06. And well, you know, the Camaros joined the flock. And well, let's not forget about Sierra. But again, let me remind you that there aren't any new GMs in the fleet. And there probably won't be any <laughs> Uh, a woman scorned, right? What does that make me? At any rate, that is a wrap on my thoughts on that car because I'd rather not think about it too much more, especially in light of the fact that the GT500s of the world were still running around back then. And well, to be honest, I'd even take one of those over the Z28. At least Shelby had a little bit of panache. Most people just remember Z28 is where they got to third base back when they are in high school. So with that, I'll wrap it up. Y'all have a great one, Adios.